Yeah, well, you know, you're just inspiring me. I'm switching up my question now at the last minute. I was, I was going to ask you something stupid inside baseball gossipy about objectivism, um, but I want to ask you something much more positive and inspired by what you just said, and that is this notion of really wealth creation. And uh, I talked about this on the Ayn Rand Center UK podcast a couple of weeks ago that, of course, they didn't, you know, they're from, you know, the Europe, they didn't know what Lifestyles of the Rich and Famous was, but you know, you remember Lifestyles of the Rich and Famous, yep. and in the 80s, only very rich people had a, a, a television in their bathtub. Can you remember that? Yep. It was something that if you had a TV in your bathtub built in, it was, it was only the most extravagant. And, you know, I, I, the point I, I was making is now we all have that technology. We have it even in a way, as you said, your own, you couldn't imagine. I mean, maybe you could imagine everyone having a TV, but never having an iPhone with every video ever created, every TV show ever created. So in all this talk about wealth, um, in all this talk about income inequality and politics around, how do you make the distinction between, oh, people aren't making money uh, or they're not making any more money is against, look at the wealth they now enjoy, the wealth that you can't quantify. I mean, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's yeah, still I mean, me every day. It, it truly is. I mean, it's, it's people look, and economists in particular, only look at the amount of money we have in the bank, right? And the assets we hold. And they value those assets for the dollar amount you paid for them. And yet the actual wealth that you possess far exceeds that. Because the value your iPhone represents, the value fiber into the home represents, the value that technology represents is not captured in the amount of money I paid for it because the value is so much more than that. So that we are so much richer, and this includes the poor who tend to have smartphones, who tend to have automobiles, who tend to have things like air conditioning. And, and just think about 50 years ago, air conditioning was pretty rare outside of a few places that were very, very hot. Um, but yet all those things enhance human life, enhance standard of living, enhance quality of life dramatically. But economists can't measure them. They can't capture the value of them. So they're never counted. Even when you look, when you look at the inequality numbers, which I think are all bogus, and I don't even, I think the whole inequality debate is irrelevant to anything really. But what's interesting is, if you look at what people call consumption inequality, consumption inequality. That is the difference between what poor people spend on consumption, on stuff, and what rich people spend on stuff. That shrinks. It hasn't gone up. Rich people might be worth more and maybe earn more, but they don't spend more. Because you know what? After that first private jet, you would know, Jonathan, you don't need to, right? My father used to say, you can only wear one pair of pants in the morning. Exactly. <laughs> and I always say, compare me to Bill Gates, right? Bill Gates is, I don't know, 10,000 times richer than me. Or I, I, I don't know the exact number. Um, I, should, I should make the calculation one day. But he, he drives a car, and I drive a car. Now, his car's probably nicer. But mine has leather. It's not bad, right? And it gets me to where I need to go. And in most places, at about the same time that Bill Gates's car would get him there because traffic and everything he's not driving faster than I am so he's at the very tiny little bit of margin a little bit more comfortable than me I've got a nice house he's got a nice house now his is nicer bigger more electronically fancy but how much better is it in terms of utility to your life it's not a lot it's not how much would I give to have Bill Gates's house? Not much, right? Um, take room. somebody, take yeah, somebody well, poor, and take somebody poor. Even somebody poor in America today typically has a house. They, they're protected from the weather. They have heating. They, they typically have air conditioning. Um, you know, they have a car. So don't use me because I'm probably in the in the higher, you know, upper middle class, or or my wife likes to call it lower rich. I don't know what category that is. Um, but if, if you take somebody put, they have all these things, right? Um, they, they can get to work with a car. They, can, they live in a house. Uh, they have a television. They, they, theirs might be 55 inches 
Bill Gates's might have the 100 inch one that costs $80,000. But you know what? Both of their Netflix subscriptions cost exactly the same. Exactly the same, right? Uh, so it's not, so yes, his television is bigger, his sound system is better, but pff, they're watching the same movies, same TV shows at the same cost. And you go through all these things. Yeah, Bill Gates eats at nicer restaurants, more frequently, maybe, maybe, who knows? He's, a, you know, I probably eat at more fancy restaurants than Bill Gates, just because it's my hobby and not his. But, um, but, you know, everybody in America, we've got an obesity crisis <laughs> because everybody's eating. Nobody's starving in America. We're eating. Um, and then, uh, you know, Bill Gates flies on a private jet. If he wants to go from, from Seattle to New York, he gets on his private jet and goes. And if I want to go from, from Puerto Rico to New York, I get on a private jet and fly there. You know, it, I happen to share my private jet with about 300 other people. It's still a private jet. It still gets me to New York. Um, it's still incredibly convenient. They're regular flights. Uh, and for the most part, it's affordable to almost everybody in the country. That think about air, airplane travel, Jonathan, 40, 50 years ago. Sure. How many people could afford it? Now, almost everybody, tra I mean, we're not traveling right now, but generally people are traveling all over the place. I mean, if, and complaining, of course, but, but, but fine. Well, you know, I'll, and I'll just quickly say, and I want to monopolize the time, but you know, they always talk about inflation and being kind of a stealth tax. You don't really see it. And strangely, it seems like often wealth creation is like that as well, because we've become so accustomed to it that, you know, and I'll, I'll quickly tell an anecdote. I replaced a car, like a, a Jeep Cherokee that we had had about 11 years. And that same level Jeep in 11 years is so much better. There's all these systems now that, 11 years ago, backup systems and camera systems that it's the same model. And that's wealth creation. It's become so commonplace now, you have to stop and just marvel at it once in a while. And it's, it's not more it's expensive. Amazing. It's not, in and of itself, it's not more expensive. It's about the same cost yes. uh, as it was back then, uh, adjusted for inflation. And, and yeah, I mean, another way to think about this since you brought up inflation is, think of how much deflation, deflation in the sense of pricing going down, which is not, Prices, if, if we had a rational, um, uh, you know, free market monetary solution, prices would be going down because quality, in, in, if you control for quality, you know, you're buying the same car, but the car is so much better. So it's really cheaper. If you buy a computer now and the computer 20 years ago, same cost, but the computer is yes. so much better. So in a sense, per unit of utility, Prices have gone down dramatically. And indeed, when you look at charts of costs of things, over the last 20, 30 years, to a large extent because of technology and China and trade, global trade, prices of almost every good have gone dramatically down. Except? Except the things that government touches. Uh, housing, healthcare, Education, and they've arguably, gone dramatically up. Yeah, and arguably automobile prices should be going down too uh, if, it, if they were so heavily yeah. regulated. Absolutely, and and air travel would be cheaper, and all these things would be would be cheaper and faster and more convenient and better. So so, but I like that stealth. In a sense, the increases in our standard of living are stealth. We don't act. We we don't actually, and this is why, and this is an important psychological point in my view. It explains a lot of what's going on in America. It's why people so easily buy into the rhetoric of inequality. It's why people believe they're worse off. So, so you know, everybody believes now that their wages are lower than they were 30 years ago. They believe that the standard of living is lower than it was 30 years ago. They believe that crime is higher than it was 30 years ago. They believe generally life is much worse in every dimension than it was 30 years ago. And that none of that is true. But if you say it to them often enough, and since the improvement are not easily monetized, and the stealth, as Jonathan mentioned, the stealth improvements, they, it's easy to convince them. And Trump did it in 2016, I think one, and the left has been doing it for 
12 years. I mean, one of the things that one of my big objections to Trump is that he's picked up on all the left's talking points, right? This talking point that the middle class and the working class are worse off than they used to be is a leftist talking point that Trump has picked up on. But it's just not true. But because of all these things are stealth, it's easy to convince the people that it's true because they don't think. That's the bottom line. They don't think and they don't think about it in those terms. They don't think of how wonderful it is to have Zoom, right? And be able to communicate with people even during a pandemic. They just take Zoom for granted. They take their computer for granted. They take their Netflix for granted. They take all these things for granted. Every day I have more more respect and understanding why Rand felt it's so important to study history. Yep. Uh, and why that was such a focus of, of hers. Uh, and certainly, um, thanks, Jerome. Great response. What we need today, what I call the new intellectual, would be any man or woman who is willing to think. Meaning, any man or woman who knows that man's life must be guided by reason, by the intellect, not by feelings, wishes, whims, or mystic revelations. Any man or woman who values his life and who does not give, want to give in to today's cult of despair, cynicism, and impotence, and does not intend to give up the world to the dark ages and to the rule of the collectivist brutes. All right, before we go on, reminder, please like the show. We, we've got 163 live listeners right now, uh, 30 likes. That should be at least 100. I figure at least 100 of you actually like the show. Maybe there are like 60 of the Matthews out there who hate it. But, but at least the people who are liking it, you know, I want to see I want to see a thumbs up. There you go. Start liking it. I want to see that go to 100. All it takes is a click of a, a, click of a, a thing, whether you're looking at this. Uh, and, and, you know, the likes matter. It, it's not an issue of my ego. It's an issue of the algorithm. The more you like something the more the algorithm likes it. So, you know, and if you don't like the show, give it a thumbs down. Let's see your actual views being reflected in the likes. But uh, if you like it, don't just sit there, help get the show promoted. Of course, you should also share and uh, you can support the show at yourunbookshow.com slash support or on Patreon or Subscribestar or Locals. Uh, and uh, and show your support for all for, for for the work for the value hopefully you're receiving from this, and uh, and of course don't forget if you're not a subscriber even if you even if you just come here to troll or even if you're here like Matthew to defend Marx, uh, then uh, you should subscribe because that way you'll know when to show up you'll know what shows are on when they're on you'll get notified right so um, yes like. Share, subscribe, support. Like, share, subscribe, support. There you go. Easy. Do one or all of those, please.